Hey, good morning, everyone. Marty Mazzora here. It's Thursday, the 14th of December, 2023. Didn't plan on doing a video today, as I've mentioned recently. Right now, I'm spending my normal blogging time on the lengthy year-end letter that we do. And we've got three parts out to you so far, and there's more to come. And this is where it gets good, or I think interesting, because we really get into our longer-term thesis why we're thinking the way we do on a long-term basis and the opportunities that we see out there globally and so on. But again, today, uh, due to yesterday's really surprisingly dovish uh, Chairman Powell, I mean, contrast that with what he said less than two weeks ago in an interview, and this was dramatically different. He gave the market all it could ask for and more yesterday. I was a bit surprised, to be honest with you, based on what he had just said at his last speaking engagement. We can interpret that a number of ways. So what I want to do first is just kind of give you just a really brief overview of how I saw yesterday and whether or not it moves the needle and what we're thinking going forward. And as for the latter, no, it actually doesn't change our overall strategy. Uh, the stock market is clearly reading it as a soft landing. The bond market is actually discounting a recession next year, in my view. Fed funds futures are actually discounting six rate cuts next year. I don't see how in the world that happens unless we're in recession. The Fed is forecasting three. If the bond market is right, the stock market is in a very risky position. I'd say the second quarter on of next year. And it could be earlier. You know, the stock market's job is to sniff out the future. If it can, it's definitely not always right. A lot of people would tell you the bond market is virtually always right. More cautious, thoughtful, conservative investors there. I don't necessarily agree. I think the, I think the bond market can be wrong as well. But right now, the bond market is uh, anticipating what our indicators say is a high risk of happening next year, and that's a recession. Now, if the stock market does have it right, and there's not going to be any recession, and we're going to have a good, you know, beautiful, immaculate soft landing, um, you have to wonder how much upside there is from these valuation levels. That said, there are sectors that I think are reasonably valued if we're not going to have a recession. Uh, small caps would be an area of the market that have a lot of catch up to do, and that seems to be happening, and there seems to be a real rotation there. Uh, if we do have a recession, those who are suffering from that fear of missing out and piling in there, sadly, are going to have a very rude awakening. If not, there's more room to run for sure, and there may be more room to run anyway before ultimately you know, things roll over in a recessionary scenario. And of course, if the market does continue to melt higher and retail sales were better than expected that came out this morning, that that sort of data is what the future has in store. Well, then inflation highly likely doesn't get in a sustainable way down to the Fed's target. And therefore, there ain't no rate cuts coming. And that would be real problematic based on what the market, the stock market is trading on right now. And then lastly, I want to quote the one analyst who we pay for their research. That's one of our bigger budgets is paying for the research that we respect the most out there to complement our own. Said this yesterday, we were bullish on stocks going into 2023 and our macro quant model still sees near term upside for equities, but the path to a soft landing remains very narrow and did not widen today. While this week's Fed meeting reduced the risk of a recession in the next few quarters, thanks to the accompanying easing of financial conditions. And what he means by that is that just that statement and the anticipation of cutting rates three times next year is very accommodative. So that creates easier financial conditions. It has increased the risk of a second wave of inflation, as I just said. And a resurgence in inflation would ultimately result in a deeper recession than one where the economy simply continues to cool. His base case has been the economy is going to continue to cool, second half of next year, recession on, stock market in bad shape in that scenario, and it probably begins to discount that before we get to the second half of the year. My view and my experience has been that the stock market 
we'll sniff that out sooner if indeed the data do roll over or frankly if inflation really begins to spike up that would bring the fed right back in and that would be problematic so it just seems like you know the party is back on uh, not everywhere i the actually the nasdaq 100 has flirted with negative territory today. The S&P is really only up 39 basis points. Small caps are up 276 basis points. And as I said, then I'll show you here, I was a little more constructive on small caps than say the S&P and the NASDAQ. And, uh, but this is just a, you know, just a rip your face off rally that's happening there. And we know why. And of course the question is gonna be, is it sustainable? So I'm just gonna run through the rest really quickly. Here is your uh, S&P 500 daily chart breaking above that bearish rising wedge. Um, of course, that's that's not bearish, right, to break above that. That's a false, you know, that, that would be a false signal there and that would be bullish. However, nothing's changed down here on these divergences. It's certainly not on the MACD anyway. Uh, you could say we're burning through the bearish divergence on the RSI, but man, oh man, are we in overbought territory, right? And if you go back to when we've been in overbought territory, right, in the past, right, um, you know, there's, there's been some, ne not necessarily good things tend to happen after situations like that. So stay tuned there. Uh, the NASDAQ 100 index also breaking out above its rising wedge pattern here. As I mentioned here, you can see that the, the, uh, Blue candle means down off of where it opened today. And remember last time I showed you a striking resemblance between right here and the previous all-time high. And this was part of that. This is a buy signal, but we still have a very negative divergence, a long one, which is worse, and then a short one right here. And very overbought on the uh, RSI. I need to say again, though, you know, it's Christmas time. Santa Claus rally is what we're getting as I speak. Russell 2000 small caps, uh, just absolutely huge, right? And this is people buying into that, okay, recession off the table, got to own small caps. I've said over and over again, and I've done this over and over again, and that is be a buyer of small caps when a market is legitimately bottoming in our view. That's not the case here, but the market right now is telling me I'm wrong. So we shall see. This does not comport with, uh, with the data but it does comport with the sentiment right now and the soft landing scenario. Big gap here this morning, you know, gaps tend to get filled, wouldn't surprise me. Bumping up against this resistance, which would be 100% retracement of the July, the end of July to end of October correction. Still a fair piece from the all time high, by the way, this is just, this is a shorter term chart. But, um, yeah, we still don't have, this is not a negative divergence, right? Um, and nor is it on the RSI. Uh, and, you know, it's accelerating, right? So if we were coming out of recession, uh, as opposed to maybe going into one, if we were coming out of recession, I would say this is a classic breakout and we're going to run much higher. That's what the market thinks. And folks, the market could be correct. But uh, we're going to continue to do the work and continue to assess things if the coast clears, as I've said many times here. We don't have to have a big bad bear market to be buyers of stocks. It could be that conditions clear up and earnings rise to justify these levels. And I think we'll have that sense here over the next few months. If that's the case, we'll happily add to our exposure to equities. Just not the case, just not how we're reading it just yet. Uh, yesterday I said that if the Fed comes in hawkish, uh, yields are going up, and if they come in dovish, we're going to drop right back down into this falling wedge pattern. Looks like we've done that and some, right? Um, you know, it's and actually we're breaking out below it, so this would be a false signal here, if you will, because this would be the buy signal for yields or the, the, the signal to go short bonds, and that is a failed breakout, and those are bad, and you can see what's happened here. So big precipitous drop. Uh, no longer a bullish divergence on yields. So we shall see. This is going to be very volatile. I'll probably keep this one up and running here for you guys going forward. Been talking a lot about the dollar. I said exactly the same thing about the dollar. I said right here, if the Fed comes in 
hawkish, it's going up. If it comes in dovish, it's going down. So the dollar has plummeted lower here and um, made sense to us. But the dollar still has a bullish pattern going on here. So uh, we'll see how that plays out. If the dollar were to reverse and go higher, it might be because yields do the same thing. That would be problematic short term for the stock market. I've been mentioning gold. Clients, those of you who had a position big enough to hedge, we hedged it right here, doubled our money, took our profits, went up another 45, 50%, took those profits, and now gold is ramping back up. So we're losing on the hedge that we have right now, but it's really down in size and we're not going to roll it back up right here. We'll keep it on but we've already got our money back and some. So we not only have free insurance, we have insurance that we've made money on. And we'll see, gold is reacting to a weak dollar and lower yields, so it makes a lot of sense. We're long-term bulls on gold, and I'm gonna tell you why in an upcoming part of our year-end letter. Lastly, I just wanted to throw out the, uh, the yield curve. Okay, so this one is everybody's favorite, I guess. It's the one everybody talks about. When the yield curve inverts, recession is an inevitability. Uh, I can go back here to the 70s. You can see it inverted, recession, out of recession, inverted, recession, inverted, recession, inverted, recession, inverted, recession, inverted, recession, and so on. This is the two-year, 10-year spread. Inversion means that 10-year interest rates or 10-year yields are lower than two-year yields, right? So the yield curve, which normally slopes higher, is sloping lower. Now, when the 2 and 10 gets hit, the Fed always reminds us that, hey, we look at the three-month 10-year, not the two-month, two-year 10-year. Because see right here when the 2's 10's went inverted, the three-month 10-year wasn't, right? So the Fed was saying, that's not our preferred measure. I think some of the Fed members were saying that, if I recall. And then theirs did invert. This is the one they're concerned about. And ironically, they're not talking about it because they don't want to talk about recession. At one point right in here, Chairman Powell was saying he doesn't think that we're going to be able to kill inflation without creating a recession. And I think maybe he was respecting their own indicator here. But it is still way in inverted territory. And um, they're really thinking or saying that they can get a soft landing out of this thing. So we shall see. I mean, we can always, ha history can always give us a first, folks. I'm, I'm not opposed to that. This looks pretty ominous to us right here. Now, also, I wanted to point out that it's really not when it's inverted that you have the recession. That's the signal. And it takes like seven months to two years historically. We're 20 months into this one, at least this one here. It's when it re steepens, right? So notice right here, now the yield curve is in positive territory. So what does that mean? Every single time the recession happened, uh, virtually right here too, virtually every time, actually every time, when it was re-steepening, okay? And you can see it's threatening to re-steepen right here, although it's come back down. So why would that be? Well, so when the yield curve inverts, what's happening is that investors are anticipating lower interest rates. And if interest rates are going to drop, you want to own the longest term bonds you possibly can because you're going to get the biggest price appreciation out of those. So investors will say, oh my gosh, recession's coming. They'll rush to the 10 year, for example, and they'll push the price up and the yield down. And the, typically the Fed has been hiking rates into that. And the two year really is a representation of the anticipation of Fed funds rates. So typically what happens is, it inverts while the Fed is tightening monetary policy, which is happening here, right? The two-year yield is pushing up faster than the 10-year yield and to the point where it inflects and it's higher. And then as the tightening goes on and as the market begins to think that that's really going to work and slow the economy, well, then it wants to get on the long end of the curve to take full advantage of those falling interest rates. And so the re-steepening comes when the recession light gets lit, the two year comes down because now they're anticipating that the Fed's gonna have to cut rates. The two year goes down faster actually than the 10 year is going down because that's gonna drop precipitously the minute the Fed is done and they're gonna start cutting rates. So that's the re-steepening. Originally the 
the the inversion comes because everybody starts buying the 10-year and the two-year is stubborn because the Fed still may raise interest rates. Once the Fed's off the table, the two-year plummets below the 10-year, and now you have that re-steepening. But the recession risk is still big time there. In fact, that pretty much seals the deal historically. Now, the bulls, the perma bulls, to be, to be sarcastic, would tell you that, see, the, the yield curve is steepening again because the economy is doing really well. No, that's not the case. It's actually steepening because the short end is plummeting because they think the Fed's going to have to cut interest rates. And if that's true, that means we're in recession. Like I said earlier, we don't get six rate cuts next year unless we're in recession. Hope that all was helpful. Definitely went longer than I meant it to, but I think it needed to be said. But uh, yeah, we need to remain humble. Uh, anything can happen in the markets. We remain open to all possibilities. And I'll leave it there. Talk to you soon. Thanks for watching and listening. Take care. Bye-bye.